Oh, baby. There we go. Gentlemen, as promised, one of the greatest of all time. Ha <laughs> ha! The Blast Master, KRS One. Now the reign supreme <laughs> over nearly everybody. What is the deal? The man who taught me consciousness. He tricked me and named this album Criminal Minded with a machine gun on the cover. But <laughs> then said airplanes <laughs> flying, overseas Woo! people dying, politics is lying, I'm trying. My mentor, my idol. Wow. Chris Parker. Welcome to the big show. Joe, what it do? What is going on? What is Jopra? Jopra. Oh, man. Yo, Chris. Let me tell you, before we go into this, because we're going to go right there. Um, Shout out my brother, Mr. Flower Fantastic. If you see these Jordan sneakers he got right here, he released them tonight on the 23rd. These shits are incredible. He came in person to wow. deliver them. I didn't even know he knew where I was staying. Wow. When he knocked on the door wow. and came with the joints, and this is some fucking art. Yeah, I'm trying to see these. Wow. All right. So listen, I got to take the shades and the hat off. I can't look cute no more. <laughs> KRS-One is just the guy to lead the crew right up to your face and diss you. Now, KRS, they get mad at me. I had a conversation with Nas recently. Big up now. Every up. year on my birthday, Nori too. Every year on my birthday, I post the bridge is over and I'm <laughs> hyping you up. And I'm As you are all right. and I'm killing everybody. Chris, I was at Prodigy's funeral. I cried at his funeral. I love Prodigy. And what he means to hip hop. Oh, you know. And his five best friends get up there and talk. You know, they talk at the funeral. Right. And one guy said, and we ain't never like KRS one for that bridges over shit at the funeral. <laughs> yo, Chris. It be like that sometimes. <laughs> has anybody stepped to you and said, yo, Chris, not for nothing. I really don't like that you did that shit, man. Have you ever had a conversation with one of these Queens guys? All the time. Start with Shan. And then, start with Shan, then go over to Marley. Um, I remember I, I was somewhere, we was out in Switzerland somewhere with 50 Cent. And he pulled me to the side and was like, yo, I hate you. <laughs> and he said, yo, that's we crazy. had to sing this song. Uh, he, said he, he said he hated the song, but he had to sing it anyway. And he was re reminiscing his days in Queens, you know, and, and, and so you know, on. It, it, it is what it is. You know, I had an interview on uh, Shout Out LL Cool J Rock the Bells with yeah. Rock and Shantae, Living Legend. Yes. And, and I asked her, where did you hear the bridge for the first time? She said she had a show in the UK, London. Righteous. She said she ripped it down. It was ran packed, sold out. This this is in the... She said she got in the limo, and the limo driver said, yo, Shantae, you need to listen to this. <laughs> and he pressed play. And she said, holy shit, we're in trouble. Um. Wow. Why was the Bridges Over even created, Chris? Well, I was, you know, let me take you back to Shinehead real quick. Um, I was looking at Shinehead. He used to have these mixtapes out back in the days. And he also had a record out called Who the Cap Fits. Um, let them wear it. Who the Cap Fits. So I was, let I was them wear it. Red, who the no, no, Cap Shinehead was, was the man. He, he, he was huge. I was a huge Shinehead fan. I was over there checking everything he did. And I always wanted the hip-hop reggae style 
Well, actually, I wanted reggae in hip hop. And I never understood why nobody ever did it. Like, nobody, you know, this is 85, 86. Run DMC did something with Yellow Man, but it was Yellow Man with hip hop. It, it wasn't really like Run DMC in Yellow Man's dance hall style or anything like that. So I had already done I'll tell you bridges. something. I'll tell you something. I'd never heard of reggae or dance hall till the bridge is over. That's a lot of people said the same thing. And and this is the point, is, 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 I, 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 see, back then, see, see, Joe, you're touching a lot of buttons because in 84, 85, originality was a big deal. You had to be original, you know, biting another dude's stuff. Nah, it was, a, you know, you had to be original. So we were all looking for ways to be original. You had fat boys, Houdini, Run DMC, you know, they, these, these were, you know, over the top imaginary uh, group scenarios. And so I wanted to come with something that I knew we was listening to every day in the Bronx Gun Hill Road, every day on Flatbush Ave, Brooklyn, every day on Jamaica Ave, Queens, every day in Harlem. I said, I know we listening to this right here. Why can't I? So I wrote The Bridges Over first. Uh, when we got into the conversation with MC Shan. Who I made the, the beat? Skylar Rock? Well, we all had a taste. I, the beat comes off of a wall in the bathroom of the shelter at 166th Street in Boston Row. Um, um, I used to um, beat um. on the wall. That's, um, that's um, across um, the street from um, my block. But um, but um, that's but um. right. Forrest Projects was right there. Boom, you know boom, the deal. Boom, 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 we were boom, hitting boom. the wall like that. So I made the beat on this on the drum machine. I banged out the first beat, and then said G took it over from there. We we did the beat over. Said G did it did it again and put the doubles in it and all the ta 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 and all of that. That said G straight up. Shout and out to original... said G. He told me that I ain't quite believe him. I ain't gonna lie to you, Chris. <laughs> nah. He told me like you, said you didn't believe him. No, nah, I didn't believe him like that. I, and I love said G's, but you know, I was like, I was like, yeah. why am I hearing this 25 years later? Like, I should have heard this a long time ago. Now, Chris, what made you? Was it, let's be honest, was it what we call now, and you can ask your daughter what this means, a clout <laughs> chaser? Was you clout chasing them, or you really had a deliberate problem with MC Chan? It was both. Let me admit right now that it was both. Mr. Magic and the Juice crew was the shit. This, this was the crew to be with. If you was a dude like me, like I'm spitting raw in the street, we trying to get on, ain't nobody putting nobody on. It's Mr. Magic. You got to you got to go there. So we originally went to Mr. Magic with our demo to be in the Juice crew. So Magic disses us, and that starts the battle. Because he said, basically, and I'm paraphrasing, basically that the Juice crew, what they're doing is what's dope and happening. And my little conscious records and trying to stop the violence, that was not it. So he played us, and that's what I had. I had elementary, advanced, and uh, the lyrics to my philosophy on another beat. And we took that to him, and he was like, nah, this is, this is black, and we're not really dealing with it. So then the battle started. So in one breath, I, got a, I can't front and say that, no, we wanted to be down with them. Let's get that clear. We wanted to be down with the Juice Crew. We wanted to be down with, with all of the hot. This is a joke for a moment. Have... This is a joke for a moment. I don't think I ever heard you say you wanted to be down with them. We wanted to be down with them. They to be, then they dissed you. And and so you said, I'm going to go for the for the king, MC Shan, the leader. Well, well, Shan wasn't really the king. Shantae was the queen. Remember back then, Shantae was destroying to I'm Shantae. Brahms and Brahms. Keep it Brahms are fresh. I'm Shantae. She was out of control. Shantae was had everybody shook. Okay? Shantae, after when UTFO, it was, it was on from there. And then we heard a little something, how she was doing dudes in Queens, how she was doing battles and stuff like this. 
So it was really Shantae. And then from there, you had Biz. And Biz was a beast with the beatbox and all that. He made, he made, he made my, favorite, my favorite song, singular song. Rap song of all time is The Vapors by Biz Marquis. Ooh, word. And I didn't know yesterday Big Daddy Kane was on here. He told me he wrote that. And I was what, like, Word? I was Whoa. like, Yo, Kane, you wrote my favorite song ever. Whoa. He wrote that shit. Yo. We're going to be all <laughs> over the place because, you know, it's too much to talk to you about. But Kane, so I asked Kane, right? Because the way it goes with Terror Squad is if you got beef with one of us, you got beef with everybody. So I asked Kane, you Juice Crew, Cool G Rappers Juice Crew, uh, Shantae, all that. How you let Chris come at MC Shan and y'all ain't really jump on him as the Juice Crew? So he started breaking down to me how you and him was friends and you helped him move out his mother's house. You carry this velvet couch. And it's, he said, I was not going to go against Chris. He was my man. And I told Mr. Magic and them that. He said, since then, MC Shannon, Mr. Magic really ain't really fucked with Kane no like right. that. Right. Um, right. Do you think you would have been Blastmaster KRS one if the whole entire Master Ace, uh, uh, Craig G, Cool G Rat, all of them was trying to light you up. You think you would have fought? You think you would have got this far? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I might have went further because back then, Joe, listen, now you're going to have to be honest. When we first started BDP, first of all, let me wait a minute. Hold up, hold up, I, I, hold up. You see this? This right here. <laughs> you see this? Just take a just so just as a reminder. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some dudes forgot. I don't know what it is, but let me just show it one more time. Okay, see that? I got a little like let me get the light out the way right there. Okay, see that? Okay. Now these dudes here are the first time real street dudes picked up the mic and started talking. Now. The Juice Crew, for me, I always... First of all, Shan is my dog. I mean, Shan is my dog. But Kane was, was my man first. And me and Kane was in Brooklyn. And what it was so... I lived on Clarendon and Avenue D in Brooklyn. Kane was like two blocks up. And he was moving out the crib. Had nobody to help him move out the crib. We moved everything, not just the couch. We had equipment, all types of stuff. We was moving with Kane. So Kane was trying to get on as well. And we were part of a group of neighborhood MCs that were just really just battling each other and trying to make a name for ourselves in the Bronx, in Brooklyn, in Harlem. We'd all meet at Latin Quarters, you know, all this type of stuff. Wow. So uh, actually, it wasn't even Latin Quarters. And I'm sorry, it was the Roxy. Let me get this right. It was the Roxy back in the days. So Kane was my man, no doubt. And I know that that... Just out of MCing, Kane would have definitely stepped up. But the way the Juice Crew was treating him at the time, I don't think Kane really wanted to even stick That's his what neck he's telling out. Me, like, but he told me yesterday, later on, that he always wanted to smoke with you. Yes. He, he told me that everybody wants him to go up against Rakim, not, not in the verses, but in a real battle. And he said, Rakim's the GOAT. But he don't think Rakim is a battle rapper. He always wanted to battle against you. Right. I can't always say that. And I'm always here. <laughs> ain't always saying that. Yo, I think it's going to be you. We've been talking the same shit for 25 years, okay? Look, I get down, okay? I eat, sleep, and breathe this shit, okay? So... You know, it would be great. I mean, I'll tell you the truth. If I was to get with anybody as well, it'd have to be somebody I respect. And Kane definitely gets the respect. Well, you but know, on the, two, on the huh? versus battle, I don't know why they keep bringing up KRS LL Cool J. Uh, like, I, I, like, I've been looking at all the comments on Twitter, 
And uh, I don't, I, do you think that's the right battle? LL Cool J and Kevin? Well, you know, you're both my idols. You know that. I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I might have to poke your other idol over there. Um, because personally, Joe, I don't think anybody is stepping to me. Okay, let me start right there. I don't think anybody's stepping to me. And I'm not saying that arrogantly. I just know who I am and I know what it is. When it comes to that mic game and it comes to that right there, now look, I might not be able to cook. I, I, I might not be able to drive a cab. I, I, I might not be a mathematician. But when you say, yo, let's get on that mic and let's, let's move this crowd or let's have this battle or whatever it is, I'm not the one you want to fuck with. This is this is not where you come. This is this is not where you go. This is a detour, detour, detour. That that's what this is. Because Yo, Chris, if you don't follow you. the detour, there will be reconstruction on your entire career. So I hope dudes is doing their homework and going back. I mean, look, this is what history is all about. Go back, do the homework. Take a listen. Those that don't want to go back, you can check me online right now. You can leave us right now. No. Go check some of my live shows. You see my freestyle. If you think you're going to rock with KRS, let's go. And I go for any motherfucker out there. Really? Oh, my God. Yo, Chris, Chris listen. That's really? my idol. But listen, listen. <laughs> Would you do a versus with LL Cool J? I, I, of course, but I think the verses, let me be clear with the verses. They just Is songs, they're the, not battles. They're not it's song for song. Song for song, celebration of rap. It ain't battle. I don't think LL would survive. My shit is thorough, Joe. I ain't bragging. I'm not bragging and I'm not being arrogant. I don't think, I don't think he would survive. I got 25 albums, G. I, I don't think he survived. Yo, Chris, James Star Smith, you heard it first here. This is a joker moment. This is the big, big show. KRS One in a beautiful celebration of life. Uh, <laughs> and joy. Called you out for the, for the verses. He has called you out. Hello, Cool J is my idol. And no you doubt. are my idol. And no you know, doubt. I told you this. Since the first day I ever met you, I said, listen, Chris, you my idol, but I love LL too. I no doubt. I explained that to you, and you respected that. I remember one year I had my birthday at the Fever. No doubt. And Puffy was there, Biggie, everybody. Everybody. And you was destroying the place, and LL came in yes. at 3 in the morning while you was on stage. I and the crowd was going crazy because realistically, we never really seen LL Cool J in the hood in our life. Right. So I had met him like a week before and I invited him. And I said, yo, come, but he showed up. And I remember when he showed up, that was when 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 uh Flavor in Your Ear was the hottest beat in the world. And uh when he showed up, you looked at me and you smiled, and you passed him the mic. <laughs> and then he said, Yo, 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 throw that Craig Mack shit on. He he, right. he kicked the freestyle, never heard him kick before. That's right. But for me, looking up to y'all, y'all being my idols, I couldn't believe I had both of y'all on the same stage in the Bronx at the same time. It was crazy. I wouldn't I know remember what to the whole do thing. watching y'all in the versus battle. I would probably die. I would need like one of them straight jackets. Like, I, I, I just for me, right? How many albums? I mean, but how would you do that? Because song for song. He plays 20 records, you play 20 records. But 20 records is just criminal-minded and by all means necessary, that's 20 records. Yeah, but it got to be the biggest 20 records. Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg is a museum, a walking oh, institution. Yeah. He picked yeah. 20 records. You got to pick 20 records, Chris, right? So whichever ones you think are most impactful. So you would come with what we call cultural moments your songs would be cultural moments and i guess ll will have to come with the girl records the big hit crossover 
records. You know what I'm saying? So Styles and I'm trying like, to say, so what? So what determines the winner of the battle then? Nobody really determines the winner of the battle, but sooner or later, you know, if somebody gets their ass with. Of course. <laughs> so yesterday, everybody in New York City says DMX won. I think they're delusional. <laughs> it's okay. You, if you know, you know. If you watched it, you know. Yo, this is Snoop Dogg coming. One, two, three into the fall. Snoop Dogg, you know, man. You got to stop. When you keep, when you do 20 of those in a row, it's like, Jesus Christ. Right. That's real talk. You get what I'm saying? You, you yes, cut it with yes. Bridges Over. Oh, that would be a moment. You against Hello with the Bridges Over. And then you coming with still number one. You coming with my, it's, it's crazy, man. It's, 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 uh, let me tell you something. Self-destruction. Hmm. For all the young people who don't know what I'm talking about, it's a moment in hip hop where it was our we are the world moment where all the gangster rappers came together and made a song to tell the streets, uh, come up off that beef. Let's stop killing each other. Black lives matter. Now, Chris, how does self-destruction come about? <clears throat> Ann Carly uh, was the head of a and at Jive Records. Asian American woman, uh, I love her. She she was uh, the I know head what? of a Huh? I know her. I know her. <clears throat> so Ann Carly was at one of our concerts where a dude got stabbed for his chain. Uh, regular occurrence, but she was there one night. So they robbing people, taking their earring, taking the girls' earring, popping chains. Same old nonsense. So she saw one dude get his chain popped and get stabbed. This is the head of a and for Jive Records. She was so like, oh, my God, this is crazy. She went, and I had already wrote a record on By All Means Necessary album called Stop the Violence. One, two, three, the crew is called BDP. That record, wrote that already. So she said she wanted to take that record and make it a movement. And... I was, of course, like, yo, word up. This is exactly what we need. It's the direction I was already going in. But she's the one who said, let me take this record and make what is called the Stop the Violence Movement. She already had Nelson George down. Big up to Nelson George. He was a writer back then for Billboard magazine. He produces now for television and VH1 yeah, and all Nelson that. Nelson George, uh, 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 break down who he is to me because I never knew who he is. I, I, Nelson. I watch all these editorial movies and documentaries and he's the guy. If anything yeah. goes on in hip hop, they go get this guy to talk. I want to know what gives him the validation. What gives him the authenticity that he's able to talk about critical hip hop moments? Because I want, can you break it down to me? And no disrespect to Nelson George. None, no disrespect. Nelson George is the man. But your question is so real because. To be honest, the quick answer is that he doesn't have any credibility or authority. <laughs> Let's just cut right to the chase with it. Ain't nobody got no goddamn credibility except you and me, Joe. That's it. Okay? And okay. And if you ain't made a record, now look, and I say this, of course, because Nelson's my man as well. You probably have him. No, I got love for Nelson George. He'll curse too. Us, uh, he'll but Nelson I just wanted to know they always got a guy. Okay. Right? This is so what so I'm so saying. You're watching the ID channel. They no always doubt. got that guy with that voice. No so doubt. If you're watching any hip hop explosion, and I'm not taking nothing away from him, but they always go to this guy. Right. And I've met him a bunch of times, and he's a cool guy. But I'm he's, thinking, you being the teacher, you knew something I ain't know. They don't, they look, the media world is its own world. And the, this, this guy, Nelson George, is a very good writer and a classic writer. He was there. There's a few of them, like Harry Allen, Nelson George, Kate Ferguson. Um, uh, oh, man, I could name a couple of people who are writers, like Ernie Panicoli's a photographer, Joe Conzo, photographer. You know, these kind of guys. They were always around us writing, looking, asking questions, this kind of thing. So Nelson George is one of those dudes. And 
Nelson George was there when hip hop was really trying to get organized. He was one of the only few intellectuals that would even give us the time of day. Uh, it's not so much what he knows, it's more about how he treated hip hop in hip hop's crucial moment. And that's what really gives him the respect. He wrote the book, Stop the Violence. He joined the movement. He actually co-created the movement, Stop the Violence, and then went on to do great things. He's, he's the VH1 hip hop artist producer. I he's know he the, is, uh, I know he is. He's a good guy, you know, but you know. Right? But your so, question, but wait a minute, Joe, let me finish that question though, because what you're saying, people need to know this, that this is how hip hop gets colonized though, because you and me, Joe, we are the culture itself. And everyone who is like us, who produces the culture, lived through the culture, bled for the culture, put money into the culture, took money out the culture, those who are engaged in hip hop, we are the only real scholars of the culture. And you really, you don't have to be a celebrity. If you anywhere in the world and you engaged in breaking and seeing graffiti writing, DJing, maybe beatboxing as well. If you're trying to show a young kid how to do his thing, how to show a young girl how to dance, how to, how to do a thing, and you putting hip hop on it, you talking about the traditions, you letting them know what it is. If the award shows go by, you like, this is this, and this is that. And before this guy was there, this one was there. And this is what this means, and this is why this is like this. Those are real hip hop scholars. And they're all over the world but they're not gonna get a job at a university. Viacom is not gonna hire these people, okay? So well, you and know, the reason Chris, being- You know, Chris, the reason why I started doing this, right? First, I started with a podcast called uh, The Tunnel, what was it? The Coca Tunnel or some shit. And I was interviewed, I interviewed everybody, Spike Lee, whoever you name, 6 9 before pre-court uh, case, right? That's right. And I was watching these documentaries on hip hop, the birth of hip hop, the this and this and that. And the facts were so horrible. I, I would watch documentary after documentary. And if whoever made it or executive produced it swayed their, the truth in their way. That's right. That's right. And now I got scared as a fan of hip hop and me just being hip hop my whole life. I said, yo, this is not how it went. And I don't want kids in 20 years from now to watch this shit and think that that's how it went. Right. And I literally watched one documentary where, and I love this person. I love him. He's probably he's probably realer than you. To mm. me. And you know how mm. much we go back. Mm. When I was in trouble, he's the only person on earth who asked me, Joe, can I help you? His name mm. is Pitbull. Mm. Pitbull, a rapper. Sat me down and begged me, Joe, can I help you? You're my right brother. You. I love you. Right so you. I love, I worship Pitbull. Well, I wow. watched a documentary that say he's the first rapper, Latino rapper in rap. <laughs> no, this shit was on HBO. Wow. Like, big shit, production, right. and I'm sitting right. there and I'm like, so no Crazy Legs? No Tito from the Fearless Four? No Ruby D? Forget Big Pun Fat Joe, but no P Real, Cypress Hills? No Miller Man Ace? No, and, and, and that's when I was just like, oh, we can't let this happen. Because, and he had nothing to do with it. He's my brother, I love him. It's just, I started watching these documentaries and these people started lying. And that's yep. I said, you know what? Yep, yep. I yep. want the kids to see me talking to KRS 20 years from now and said, no, it's not how it happened. KRS told Fat Joe himself, this is how it happened. Not some journalist guy or whoever wants to fucking lie about what the truth is. That's why I got involved with this, to tell the truth, to let you tell the truth. Let Big Daddy Kane tell me for the first time he wrote papers. I didn't that was know crazy. That. Wow, that was crazy. So I'm sitting there, and every night we hear something new. Wow. Um, so 
it almost got me. And there's no disrespect because we got we got living legend hip hop journalists who have contributed contributed to the game immensely. But it almost got me biased saying. If you ain't really lived this shit, if you ain't really make that hit, if you ain't really have to fight the promoter because he ain't have your money, if you ain't have niggas shooting at you just because, if you ain't have to war against 50 Cent and Jay-Z and, and this, if you ain't, then I don't know how I could justify you telling me if my shit is hot or not. You real with it. This is this is what it is. And this is what we went through with the A&Rs at the record label. You sitting behind the desk and come to the studio on the last day of the session to say, raise the snare. No, this is what hip-hop has been dealing with the whole time. And that's the reason why, though, we cannot allow that. And that's why what you're doing right now is straight scholarship, because the kids will get a chance to hear straight out the mouth what it really is. And it's important that we do this, because 20 years from now, it's going to be crazy. Chris. I hopped out the casket. I was dead. They took my money. And the way this game is, if you ain't got money, you ain't got a bag, they don't really respect you like that. Mm. And so I threw a Frisbee out of the world, called all the way up with my sister Remy Ma, and the shit went number one and brought us all the way back from hell. From hell, right? And you know, because you're a Leo like me, you know me. I'm not even surprised if you say to yourself, I know Joey was coming with, with that. No. <laughs> you know I'm not fucking stopping. Right. We different. Right. We are different. You knew, okay, Joey, all right, Joey. Back, I remember one time I picked you up, I had the Phantom and this and that, and I'm, <laughs> I'm picking up my idol, and you look at you like, yo, Joe, man, you. You saving money, like you, 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 <laughs> you saving money, y'all. I was like, I'm balling, you know, I'm always balling. I'm like, yo, Chris, I'm good, but you don't anticipate shit. But why I'm telling you this story is that was in Miami. Yes. One of my mentors, uh, Steve Rifkin, says, Yo, you have been summoned. Right? You have been summoned. I can't say the name, because this is maybe. I'm not talking about no regular guy. I'm talking about a guy who owns 90% of whatever record is played in hip hop now. Wow. He said, yo, this guy wants to see you, Joe. So I'm not gonna disrespect him. I go with Steve, sit down. The man tells me, Every, this all the way up is, is killing. And I done been through hell. And I said, well, you know what? I took this meeting out of respect for you. But me signing with you when all the way up is already number one, that would be like me winning the championship and giving you the belt. What? I don't need that. I'm good. I appreciate you want to do business, but I'm cool. And no disrespect to the whole entire industry, but this is what a lot of these guys do. They get lucky. They sign 30 people. One girl becomes Lady Gaga or Rihanna, and they stand in the picture like they discovered. They make the music. They the man. They, I hate that shit, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't make the beat. They didn't do they, they got lucky, and they stand there like they're the man. Like, they made it. You're lucky to be in the picture with them. That's right. This is crazy to me. Listen, you know my middle finger been up since 1986. Fuck them all. That's the motto. I keep trying to teach my kids that. This is what the issue is, is that the minute you think they are valuable, you devalue yourself. Mm -hmm. And what you just said, like, all the way up, come on, why would you even think about <laughs> with somebody Who's like, you know, and, and, and you know what's so wild is that we did take those deals. Back in the days, we had to take these deals. We had to, you know, nobody was offering us nothing. 
and you got over, okay? You got over. I, I was young. I was 20. I was 22. I was 25. You got over. You got me. Now, 20 years later, you want to still offer me the same deal. And that's the part that I get a little peeved over. These companies and so on, you know, they, they, they still think they can buy your rights and own you and all that. And I'm like, dude, we're in the 21st century right now. Like, 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 I tell you this, and I'm coming for your interview as well, but we're doing the criminal-minded documentary, okay? We finally got our act together, and we're going to put together the criminal-minded documentary. And it's actually, a, you know, a, a series. We're going to roll it all the way out, series, everything. We're exposing everything, Joe. The stories are crazy. You already know. And um, I got one story with you in particular, which is so dope. I was bringing up, I brought it up with uh, Larry Gold the other day. Me and Larry Gold talking. He said, what was Joe doing? You was throwing a party, a stop the violence party. Joe came in, pulled the gat out, cleared the whole place out. Then he came to Simone a day later. <laughs> it's like Simone. <laughs> we was like, yo, Joe. And his name was like, this was part of our own crew. This is us. This is all of us in here. And this is SOB. Joe pulls a gun out, pull, clears the whole place. We were standing there, the five of us. The place was rammed. <laughs> we were standing there, the five of us. And I just, look, what was your take on that side? What was your side of that story? Yo, Chris, I was crazy, man. Like, I can't <laughs> lie to you. I was crazy. You know, shout out. Uh, we Pump, know that. <laughs> Pump Daddy, Baby Mom's Misa. She said she met me one day, and the very next day she was at some jam, and I was stabbing a guy. And I looked at her, I was like, oh, hi, Misa. And, and <coughs> I was like, she... <laughs> Wait, you said, go stop. Yo, Chris, she said, I could not believe I hung out with you. Today. You were the sweetest guy in the world. And then I see you doing this. And you were, you stopped and said in a nice guy voice, hi, Nisa. And like, <laughs> yo, Chris, I was crazy. Steve <laughs> Green tells me a story. He said the first time he came to a New York club, some dude came flying down the stairs, like, Boom, 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 boom. And he looked at the top. And it was me <laughs> on top of the stairs. Like, man, I told you, motherfucker. No, <laughs> we were crazy, Chris. Right? Yes, sir. What I'm asking you is, <laughs> this is something I always ask LL. Oh, Although sorry. you never used the services, did you ever think to yourself, like, yo, my apprentice the guy who thinks I'm God himself <laughs> is a crazy motherfucker that got my back one million. Have you ever thought this to yourself, Chris? Yeah, a few times I had to hold the dogs back. Forget thinking about it. All you motherfuckers is crazy. Yo, yo Chris, yo. let me tell you something about you, man. You allow me, and I'm going to tell my audience and everybody, you allow me to always be a kid again. <laughs> and to humble myself, right? Because, and I don't know if they understand, you're my Don. You're, you're, you're the guy, you know, you're my boss. You're my leader. No you understand that. And I'm no going to explain this why. No I may have the number one song in the country. I mean the number one. I got number ones, Chris. I got a number lot. ones. A few. I got a few lean backs. All the way up to what's the number one in America, right? You have a show I hear about. It. I show up without talking and report for duty. You say nothing to me. You grab me on my shoulder and you pass the mic. No doubt. I don't even perform one Fat Joe song. <laughs> I become KRS One's Flavor Flav. <laughs> That's not only to you. That's how I show the people. Mm. Yeah. Fuck me. <laughs> he the one. No. <laughs> Fuck me. He the one. And they know Joe got the Phantom outside, the Rolls oh, Royce. Yes. They know I got a million dollars in Cheerio. They know the goons is there, and they see me like this. 
and you know it. Could you just tap me on the shoulder and you be like, you ready? Here. Let's go. And we go. Chris, you've been talking forever about George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Aubrey. You've been speaking on this for decades. Systemic racism. Do you think this is the moment that we've been waiting for all these years for something to actually happen? No. <laughs> Joe, it gotta get worse before it gets better. And 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 you know, I, I I'm ecstatic, first of all, because the kind of work that we do when you do self-destruction, stop the violence, you put out records like you was playing Black Cop a couple of moments ago. Uh, when you put these kinds of records out to see the, it's called vindication, to be vindicated, to be like, you know, it's like when we did it, we did it only for us. It was wake up in the morning and fuck the police. That's what it was. So we wrote these songs that only we was like, yeah, this is for us. And right there was here. times when this wasn't a popular message. It wasn't. There it was wasn't. a Nobody time when this wasn't about money. This wasn't about nothing. Nice. It's just your beliefs. This is what it is. And all of our beliefs. So I'm going to write to that. And do it now, 20 years later, 25 years later, say the sound of the police, 25 years later, this is the issue, this the salient issue of the day. And believe it or not, it's not even anymore. It, this is crazy. It's no longer a black issue anymore. Oh, I should say black and Latino issue. You know the time. Yeah, but not it, even it's, that. It's, it's a it's, white issue too. It's a Otherwise, there wouldn't issue. be no white people out there like that. Yo, they fucking Asian, up the white people, too. Asians never get arrested for nothing. And they out there protesting. <laughs> people okay. Tired. Okay. So it's like the tide has changed. The tide has changed. But keep in mind, though, I mean, let's let's walk over a little bit to sociopolitical, uh, sociopolitical analysts, political science real quick. This is still white supremacy in the way that when we were screaming, you know, the police are, are brutalizing us. Yo, the educational system is ridiculous. Christopher Columbus, come on, help me with something. The food is crazy. The hospital is crazy. You were saying this shit, and that's what I'm saying. You're the only person on earth who ever opened my eyes and, and said, knowledge when you were saying Christopher Columbus ain't the scale. I'm like, what is he talking about? Then you look it up and you talk about Benjamin Banneker. You talking about Charles Richard Drew. You just yeah. was like, and you, and I was like, and, and so it's, it's sad and it's scary to think that we love America, right? But it's sad to think that the history we was taught the whole time really isn't true. It's not. The whole thing but is a it's lie. it's scary, Chris. When you went well, to look. high school, when you went to junior high school, you went to college to come now and to realize that this shit wasn't true. But guess what, Joe? The best, what this is the best time because the truth cannot be changed or manipulated. It's the truth. But a lie, now that you know that the whole thing is a lie, you could do anything. Like right now, you could do anything because you realize that what you was told is a fantasy. So forget getting to the truth right Did now. Did you ever feel like you was going crazy to yourself? You what? Crazy, like a mental breakdown. Like, because I'm realizing by talking to you that you were so light years ahead of your time and you were so woke the term woke now woke woke is woke. yeah woke is pm dawn rest in peace right now so <laughs> like but you was woke you no know doubt. When you met your wife she was woke no doubt you was walking around with woke people i had a time joey was still in the street wilding and and you was kicking this shit so long ago did you ever say to yourself like these people won't wake up they they're not hearing what i'm saying no, 
You, Joe, for one, and rest in peace, the pun. First of all, dudes in the street are the most intelligent dudes I ever met, okay? To be honest with you, the dudes walking around, you know, with their head wrapped or whatever it is, these are the dudes you can't even depend on, okay? Dudes walking around with that Africa pendant on and talking all this black shit, and then you come up and say, yo, let's go buy these guns and roll up on the precinct right now. They pussy, man. They straight bitch up. Now, when you say that to some real motherfuckers and you say, yo, listen, dude just shot my man down the block, those two cops right there. Yo, really? Let's go get this shit and handle this shit right now. We don't need no court and all that shit. These are two men. Kill two men. We gonna handle your ass like men. But now, I can't get that kind of reaction from an intellectual. Somebody who wanna read about the revolution. They wanna read about fucking... Uh, the civil rights movement and shit. They were getting bit by real dogs out there. <laughs> like, real, real headbutt. Real blood coming from Dr. King's head. Real brick to real head, okay? Dudes, the, a lot of intellectuals, really, they talk, 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 and don't really want to do nothing. And you know, as I was coming up, we were, we were doing real movements and trying to meet guys like you and say, yo, there's an alternative. There's another way to go, Joe. You was in Forest Projects when we first heard. We got a flow, Joe. We got a flow, Joe. I remember to this day. And and you come in, you know, and then later upon, and, and then everybody, Cuban Link, and everybody, and, and it was I like. Remember, I remember, Chris, I I would go to every one of your shows when you only had South Bronx. That, no that's doubt. where you at. And I'd be in the front of every jam, everywhere you was at. And then. I remember I told you one time somewhere, I was like, yo, Chris, you know I'm a rat. And you was like, yep. real, Joe? You supported me. <laughs> I said, yeah, 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 I'm a rat. And you supported me. And you was <laughs> like, yo, man, do your thing, you know. And then Flo Joe comes out, right? And what I want people to know, when I say your brothers always could go back and lend a hand and help you. And so after Flow Joe, because I was only rapping, so right. I was getting money in the streets, a lot of money, like a movie. And I ain't got a yep. lot of you or my people. When I started rapping and got a record deal, I never went back to the streets. I never right. hustled again. I said, this is my way out. Right. Right? Yep. So I had to take the good with the bad. So Flow Joe goes out, I'm making a couple of dollars. Then it's like a year and a half, two years old. And I'm not making money like that. And I remember you said, yo, Joe, I want to come by, uh, pick you up for dinner. And we went for dinner. And you was like, yo, Joe, how you doing, man? You got any money? You this and that. And I, and I told you the truth. I said, yo, man, it's hard. And you said, well, you know what? I want you to come on tour with me. You hype me up. And you do Flow Joe in the show. <laughs> and I made, a, I made a couple of dollars <laughs> with you. You didn't know what that felt like to me because I never bite the hand that feeds me. Mm. You get what I'm saying, Chris? No and it doubt. Came at such a time where you Come said, let me help you. I don't know if that's a Leo thing. I'm not into astrology, but <laughs> I'm loyal to the people that helped me make one dollar. I'll never forget them. You understand? And uh, you did that for me. You did too much for me. You know, I'm probably, the only reason I'm alive is because of you. And that little Cool J, you, you made me feel like I could be something. Um, KRS-1, who is in your top five MCs ever? KRS, Blastmaster, The Teacher, KRS-1, and knowledge reigns supreme. I think those dudes is hot. Hey, yo, but Chris, besides yourself, I should oh. say. Besides yourself. I never, oh. Oh. I never say Fat Joe. I say besides Fat Joe whenever I ask people. <laughs> oh, who are five, who are your top five that inspired you? Oh, that's a different question. Uh, let's go back to um, Melly Mel. 
when I heard the message, that toned me right there. That's that that said that's what I was gonna be about, the message. And then Melly Mel was just a dope MC to begin with, down with the Furious Five, all of that. Shaka Khan, what a Rocky Shaka Khan. That's all I wanna do. Broke White lines everywhere. Oh no, it was crazy. He was talking Me that shit. Crazy. Uh, Rainbow. And, and, and nice. white lines, remember white lines? Crazy. The beat that that do 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 that's that yo all that when i was young that was that was it for me i used to play that i learned how to break dance to uh 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 happy birthday i remember break dancing on the cardboard and my grandmother and grandfather looking at me like i was crazy it was like my sister's birthday and we spinning on the and they looking at me like, what the fuck are these kids doing? Straight so up. So you got Melly Mel. Okay, go over to Kumo D. Kumo, Kumo D, D was a major Kumo D was a major influence on me. The treacherous three, really, but Kumo D. Lights camera just, roller, Kumo D out, son. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Woo! Crazy. Okay, Kumo D on that. I'm growing up with this. This is what it was. Let me also shout the greatest group of all time, Run DMC. Um, these, it's not a one group, say greatest, like, you know, I, I guess we're talking about solo MCs, but I, I got to shout, uh, I don't know how to break Run DMC up because, I mean, today we just say the name Run DMC, but back when they, in 1983, when Sucker MCs first came out and when Rockbox, da 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 Nobody, you cannot front, okay? Run DMC changed the way you thought about hip hop. They just changed Let me it, explain it something to you. I was at a talent show in junior high school, and everybody was dancing to uh, Lights, Camera, Mola, Kumo, D Action, sure. right? Uh. So, so, um, and just Furious Five, all that. The talent show, I was in the talent show in my school, it might have been. 500,000 students, kids. Three girls came out and they threw on that sucker MCs. Mm. Everybody in that audience, mm. not because of them dancing, when we heard that beat drop, everybody looked at each other like this. What? We knew it was a new day in hip hop. Yup. One play. We knew it was a new day in hip hop. One play. I one watched play. 1,000 kids from the Bronx go like this. Who? This shit, same thing with Bridges Over. I'll tell you about Bridges Over. Oh, yeah. I love you. I didn't think you had a chance because I thought the Juice Crew was going to collide on you. <laughs> and they had a monopoly. They had oh, yeah, they magic did. only playing they shit. They had. They had a monopoly, right? That's right. So I That's love right. South Bronx. I felt the pride. We went crazy. But I was like, to myself, there's no way this guy's going to win against the almighty Juice Crew. And you know I was in the streets. So I would pull up to the Apollo and see MC Shannon and the Wide Body Bands and then Big Daddy Kane, Wide Body Bands, and Roxanne Chante in the Gucci truck. And niggas had chains down to here. This, it was too much. So I was like, how could this one guy with the Bob Marley t-shirt beat these guys? Sleeping so, on the train. Right? So I'm in, I'm listening to the Walkman, and Red Alert says, coming right back with KRS One's answer to MC Shan. And when that shit came on, ba doom da doom da doom. Boom, 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 ba -dum, ba -dum, boom, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, boom, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, boom, 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 bo
he did it. I was screaming in the back. Oh, my. Because we had never heard that. That was right. like that Run DMC sucker MCs. Straight it was up. a moment when you never heard that. Now, we had biters in that time. And sometimes when I listen to these young kids, and I don't want to sound like a like a uh, 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 UFO or alien, a lot of the, I don't, how do these people sound the same? Like, how do, like, and they're doing the sound, how 10 guys are rhyming like this, the same sound. Like, are people born like that? Like, so, <laughs> right. so, so, so if DMX is the man, he goes, ah, get at me, dog. And all of a sudden, we hear 20 guys, and they got that voice. That's biting, right? I love DMX. That's, 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 that's it right there. Arf, arf. Oh, no, no, he was crazy. X is going to give it to you. He's going to give Nah, nah. He's a warlord. No He's doubt. a warlord. No doubt. I'll tell you a crazy DMX story. It's a true story, and it happened many years ago. Me, Big Pun, really Big Pun and DMX had a show in Brooklyn. Thousands of people there. DMX already had stopped, shut him down, open up shop. Pun was already double platinum. We stopped at the gas station and started talking to DMX. Some dude walked in, and DMX said, one second. He walks up to the guy and robs the guy in the gas station, sticks him up. <laughs> While we just left an arena with thousands of people screaming his name. And so fucking crazy. I'm watching him in the battle yesterday. He was like, this was this stick up anthem. This was this stick up kid anthem. I'm like, yo, yo, DMX was really, <laughs> really fucking crazy. Like, we fun looking at each other like, yo, this nigga is crazy. Like, <laughs> yo, he, he was nuts. We just These did are a the concert. Part, this is the part of hip hop that people don't get to hear. And they get that story you said that this guy, you know, it comes out that uh, Pitbull is, is, the, is the thing. And it's, it's a shame because if you knew that, you know, you might even approach yourself differently. If you know the real history of hip hop and what is really like behind the scenes, who dudes really are, what it was really all about. I remember DMX straight up. You gave me three. Melly Mel. Kumo uh, D. Kumo D. And you said I Run know, DMC is all one. It's all one. I want to put Run DMC in all one. Shine him. Throw him in there. He had a major, major. No, Sean had, Sean had video music box. Shout out Rob McDaniels, another one of my mentors that I love. He used to play Sean Head all the time on video. All music the time. Box. Ralph knew what's up. Ralph from Brooklyn, so he knew. But Sean Head, that 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 was that was the one right there. And you know what? I'm gonna say um, this this might this might shock a few people, but uh, there's um. Well, 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 you say people that influenced me. Uh, that's about it. What I was thinking of was later in life, there were other MCs like like Naughty by Nature, Tretch Vin, um, people like um, uh, Lord Finesse, um, um, move over to the West Coast, Razkaz, uh uh, people like this. Uh, I, I, I was in situations. Let me also throw Buster Rhymes in there too. Um, I was in situations where they they helped me to, to hone my craft a little more. Where I I, 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 I was looking like like there's certain things like this shows where you look at a show and hone your craft on the show. Then there's these individual moments where you're like, no, that was skill right there. Uh, or you know an MC just messed up, but he did it so slick that you only you knew, and the crowd just kept going. You like, yo, that's skill right there, or like this. People like 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 say Lord Finesse for instance. When I was coming up, Lord Finesse, the Funky Child, 
this was this was my dude right here, my go-to dude that like I would look at and be like, "Am I doing this shit right? Let me make sure I'm doing it right." By and make you that. sharpen your skills, even though he listened to you and you influenced him, he made you sharpen your skills. That's why I right me. We put out Flojo, Flojo number one in the country, but Flojo was bust it, check it, watch how I wreck it. And then Nas came out the next year with Sneaker Uzi on the island, in the landing on my Uzi Giant John, and Hot Man Have Amazing. Nas in it, and I'm, I'm listening to Illmatic like, yo, my career is over because it's a new day. Like, oh, Illmatic was a new Illmatic, goddamn I was like, day. it's a new day. But I listened to it so much, and because I told you, because of how we are, yeah. uh, I knew I had to get better and study people like him so I could step my game up, you know? And and even though I was out already, I was like, listen, if I don't, if I do some shit, that if my shit ain't fucking with that, right. then we out of here. Then we out of here. And see, that's why my top five change every 10 years yeah, really, it changes all the time. I, I, it I look at top fives almost like politicians. A <laughs> politician says some shit three years ago, ten years ago, you want to hold them to the shit. Right. Oh, like, no, man, hip-hop changed. Top five changed. I might feel good today. I might not feel good tomorrow. Right. I'm it's Democrat good. on Monday, Republican on Wednesday. Remy and Pat Poos. Do not talk top five in their house. Cause they fight. <laughs> not physically, but you know what it is. She don't want to hear that shit. She'll throw right. somebody in there that got some big hits. She'll she'll fuck around and say this week. The, I don't know, but let's just say Travis Scott. All right. He'll be like, yo, Travis Scott over Gucci right? Oh fuck. Yo, and then I'll be like in the middle, like, yo. She'll be like, this is why I don't play this top five game, Joe. I don't play this top five game because this guy's crazy. Right. And everybody got the, that's why I say everybody has their own top five, man. And that's what made hip hop so beautiful where you could stay in front of the building or stay in the hallway and argue who's better than who. And we've been so diverse. So hip hop in itself, I think there's something you taught me. It's like we're our own religion. Yeah. We, we, and, and we never, and it's something you definitely never did, right? And shout out to Bam Bada. Uh, you always embraced any race that love hip hop and that you felt their heart was pure. I seen you with more Puerto Ricans than black guys, <laughs> including Fat Joe. No, no it's real no. shit. No doubt. I see Meet you with out, Asians. Bro. I see you with white guys. Whoever's pure and real, you never seen a color like that. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And real is the only true color. Huh? Real is the only true color. That's, that's the only true color you should be looking for is real. And you know what? Just on that fifth, can I just say this? And not because you sitting here, but... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say pun. <laughs> I'm going to say pun. And I would put you in there too, Joe. Let me say this too for everybody listening as well. I'm not just saying this because I'm talking to Joe and, 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 and he asked me for my top five, so I'm going to say Joe. No. I have, st I have incidents. I have recordings. <laughs> okay, let me, let me come here, okay? Big pun in terms of people who I looked at and was like, is my shit right by a certain MC? Pun, I always, we always saw Pun. Pun was always there. There's Pun right there, okay? But when Pun did Little Little Italy, Italy, Little Italy, yo, let me tell you, I'm a lyricist, I'm a wordsmith, my G, we get into these syllables, okay? What Pun did with that, set him so high on the MC ladder. He didn't have to say nothing else. That lyric, there's certain lyrics in hip hop that changed again. I fought him. People like to rewrite history. People don't really know they weren't there. Yo, Chris, I fought him to put that in that song. 
That yeah. was a joke to him. <laughs> that was a joke. He would say, pack in the back of the back of the ass. What? Say, Dead in the middle of the middle, like a joke, like a riddle. And I said, you know, pun, if you say that in this song, it will blow people's minds. He's like, that shit is yeah. right. That shit is a joke, Joe. That's just, I said, yo, pun, you will kill the game if you say that. And I can't take no credit because he wrote it, he did whatever. But let me tell you something. I fought him to leave that in the record and thank God he put it in there. Because that's where that, he got all his quota boosts from and everybody's like, deep in the middle of little, literally, little. Yo, that, if anybody out there want to learn how to rap, okay, I would start your ass right there. That right, in terms of syllable cadence, if you want to do DOS effect style, if you want to do KRS's style, if you want to do Busta, anybody that's flipping syllables like this, uh, like this pun kind of put everybody together and said, this is how you do it. And I looked at that and was like, yo, and that's not the only thing. Let me go further with pun real quick. So we on tour. Y'all go on stage before me. I forgot where we was. We was we always somewhere, but it was a big stage. And Pun seemed like he was at his biggest, okay? And it was you and Pun up there, place ram, and y'all went, I was going to go on two acts later. Or, or, no, actually, I was going on next. That's why I was standing there. That's right. I was there. Y'all ripped this shit so hard. Now, look. This is KRS, okay? I, I already know what we do to clubs. I'm sitting on the side, like, tell, I'm bumping, like, yo, listen, listen. I'm telling the breakers. I'm like, listen, these two fucking bodyguards up here, this shit is going to be a problem. And it was so crazy because Pun was big. He was at his biggest, and he's running back and forth the stage. He's stopping in the middle, giving it to you like this. Little and little and not missing a beat. I'm like, yo, this dude has got to be 400 pounds. Like, he's up, he's up there running back. I turned to my crew. I said, you see this? And do you see this? Okay. We can't be on stage with no walking around, looking at this shit. Joe like this. <gasps> Oh, crowd like you this. taught us Pun this, Chris. You taught us this. Pun is giving yo. Let me tell you this. This this is my last piece on Pun. Pun, I know you hear us. Listen to this. Remember when Pun fell on Simone? In, in the Bronx? that's what I was waiting for. Big Pun fell off the stage <laughs> and fell on Chris's wife Simone. I thought she was dead, Chris. He fell <laughs> off stage. And he got back up and kept performing. Yo. And but I'm like, yo, Simone, are you okay? Like, are yo. you alive? Pun fell straight off the stage. Simone was filming him. He fell right on her, and they both hit the ground. And Simone was like, he felt like a big pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's crazy, though, man. Yo, let me I give it to Pun. I'll give it the pun. Pun is in the top five in KRS's list. Wow. And this is and this is the reason why. And not just because you here, Joe, but let's just pay attention to this man's flow. And and anybody out there got a problem with this, I tell you, go back and listen to to Punisher's work, his album, especially the stuff that Punisher did with other people. His his lyrics or his his uh, uh guest appearances. That's when you really gonna hear pun on them guest appearances. You know, you know what, man? You taught us that, man. And we and, and we never looked at everybody as competition, but we really did. Mm. And so, so like pun, say the record I had John Blaze. He forced me to get Nas on John Blaze because mm. he wanted he wanted the world to see that he was incredibly gifted and nice at, and, and he did all that. Even if I studied, I was still shit, 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 shit on you. So that, like he was, oh, now you don't know you don't fucked up, right? Ha, you ain't got no wins in me, casa. 
¿Qué te pasa? You ain't even in my class. I hate, a, I hate a rapper who plays an actor. I'm Terra Squad Beta Kappa, everybody's favorite rapper. Yo. <laughs> I don't know what's better than that. And said the rhyme that Punk said. He said, I, I come back, if I die, I come back as an angel, snatch your halo. Did, like, he was like, you know, the guy, he yep. was too much. He was, he was too, too much. much. He was too much. You know, Chris, he would fall asleep. Like, he had, like, sleep apnea or something, right? Right. And he would wake up and grab a pen and a paper and write down the whole song he dreamed about. Wow. On the book. This guy was like, and like you said, uh, my father was born a baker. You know, some people born accountants. Some people, he was born an MC. Straight up. Like, like he was just born. Jay-Z was born an MC. Straight you was up. born an MC. Eminem was Straight born an MC. Up. There is no other profession. That's a five right there. <laughs> That's, That's a five right there. You know, last week, which is crazy, I get a phone call from Kanye West. Yeah. And he's looking for your number. Yeah. And when you type in KRS One on my phone, it's like ten thousand KRS One numbers. <laughs> KRS, yeah, KRS Bronx, KRS Atlanta, KRS Arizona, KRS overseas, KRS Queen Elizabeth, because you used to take the boats. KRS, it's so much shit. KRS on my phone. The only accurate way, accurate way to get you is through my wife, through Simone. Yes, indeed. The, the only way, and shout out Kid Capri, because I called him. I said, "Yo, kid, I really need Chris's number, because this is real important." I didn't want to tell him Kanye West is looking for KRS One, and <laughs> I thought it was amazing. He was looking for you to ask you for your permission, because his mother had did like a tribute to you. He got in touch with you because he hit me back and said, yo, I got him. Good looking. So I felt stupid because everybody thinks if anybody got KRS's number, it's Fat Joe. <laughs> right? No, no, I'm being honest. So I was like, damn, I couldn't give it to Kanye, you know, because I love Kanye. Well, and, uh, so how did that, how did you feel when you heard his mother reciting your lyrics? Man, first of all, that's the one thing that'll calm a Leo down in a minute. Okay, moms? <laughs> okay, first of all, let's start right there. This is moms, my G. Okay, this is moms straight first and foremost. And she she um she was obviously somewhere, a lecture, church event, something she was in front of a group of people and felt the need to say these lyrics. She had a little MC skills as well. The way she said it, she didn't just read it. She said it with the sarcasm that you're supposed to say those lyrics with. And she said it like that. Um, I was blown away, man. I, 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 was, I was really um, like, it, it, it just, again, it was a vindication. Because the same week that uh, Kanye finally got in touch with me it was in, and basically asked me for my blessing is what he called it. He said, if I can have your blessing on this record right here. So, of course, I heard the record. I was like, wow, this is crazy. I even spit a verse for him as well. I spit a 16 on that as well. Might be a little harsh, but uh, I spit a 16. I said, look, whatever you want to do with it, do with it. But it, it, it is what it is. And he, when his moms did that, I said, wow, you know, first of all, his mom. Second of all, she did it poetically. Third of all, she's deceased, which makes her the ancestors talking. And me and Kanye got into this conversation about his presidency and talking about that. Like, wait a minute, your mom's is talking from the other side. He felt the same way, which is why he said, I also wanted to get in touch with you because we just got this. We just put this together. He's bugging, saying, well, how did my mom's even do this and record it and have it available now like this? So he's freaking out. I'm like, yo, you know, it's God. The minute I put God on it, you know he start going. That's right. <laughs> he start going into this whole God conversation. And then we get around to the presidency. 
And, you know, he expressed, you know, just, uh, you know, that he felt he could run and so on. My thing was that I, we have all, you've always heard me talk about at some point in the future, a hip hopper is going to run for president. It is inevitable, whether it's Kanye, whether it's somebody else, it is inevitable that at some point in American history, someone is going to rise up and say, I listen to hip hop and I'm going to represent that group if I'm president. Whoever says that is not only going to win the presidency, they're going to win the world. <laughs> okay, they're going to the whole globe. Okay, because the whole world is so sick of their government globally. So, okay, no government is in good standing with the people. None. There's not one government on earth that can say, I got the respect of my people. Not one. Okay, the only urban government that got the respect of the world's people is hip hop. And when we realize that as hip hoppers, we're gonna unite. <laughs> we're gonna be like, you know what? We don't need you. We don't need you. We don't need you. And we don't want you. We're gonna unite around our own principles, around our own laws, build our own courts, open our own schools. We don't need you. So in the meantime, before that come up, I said to Kanye, and we had this conversation, and I said, look, if you run, I definitely will support you, but I'm, I'm repping hip hop straight up. This is, this is the reason why I would even want to think about being part of a presidential campaign. I'm not going to be no president because I'm not trying to play that game, but I could definitely advise a president. I can advise. Can you do me a favor? Can we, end, can we end this? Can you slowly kick the verse acapella that Kanye's mom's? She said, she said, um, I'm, I'm trying to go because uh, I could do the whole record. <laughs> I know, but, but what she, I'm saying is, I want yeah, to hear. She, 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 I'm trying to remember when she came in. Officer, I'm trying to remember. Officer, officer, I think you need, I, I, I want That's I when want, she came in. No, 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 no. She came in before that. But, all right, so just say the verse. Like, I just want, go. I need people to hear this verse without drums, without everything. I, they need to know. They need here you to go. Hear. Here you go. So here's a little truth. Open up your eyes while you're checking out the boom back. Check the exercise. Take the word overseer like a sample, repeat it very quickly in a crew. For example, overseer, 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 officer, 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 officer. Yeah, officer from overseer. You need a little clarity? Check the similarity. The overseer rode around the plant to your shine. The officer is on patrol and not in your shine. The overseer could stop you what you're doing. The officer will pull you over just when he's pursuing. The overseer had the right to get ill. And if you fought back, the overseer had the right to kill. The officer got the right to arrest. And if you fight back, they put a hole in your chest. Whoop! They both ride horses. After 400 years, I got no choices. The police, they have a little gun. So when I'm on the streets, I, I walk, walk around, around with a big one. one. Whoop, whoop! I hear it all day, just so they can run the light and be up on their way. Yo, Chris. One last favor for me. I, that, that, that's it. That's it. Terrell is in the house. One last favor. Kick the verse about love's going to get you. Love's going to get you. What? Well, any, you can do the whole song of love's going to get you. <laughs> listen. Let's start. One, listen. That's my favorite KRS-One record ever. Here's a little piece of it, Joe, right here. I'm in junior high with a B plus grade. At the end of the day, I don't hit the arcade. I walk from school to my mom's apartment. I gotta tell these suckers every day, don't start it. Cause where I'm at, if you soft, you lost. To stay on course means to roll with force. My boy named Rob, he chilling in a Benz in front of my building with the rest of his friends. I give him a pound, or I mean I shake his hand. He the neighborhood drug dealer. My man! I go upstairs. <laughs> all right, all right, yo, Chris. I go upstairs. Wait a minute, let me finish it. Oh, wait, what are you saying? 
I go upstairs and hug my mother, kiss my sister, punch my brother. I sit on my bed to watch some TV. Boom, 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 boom. Do my ears deceive me? No, that's the fourth time this week. Another fast brother shot dead in the street. The very next day, I'm off to class. My mom's go to work, cold oh. busting her ass. My sister's cute, but she got no gear. I got three pairs of pants and with my brother I share. So there in school, I made a fool. With one and a half pair of pants, you ain't cool. But there's no dollar for nothing else. I got beans, rice, and bread on my shelf. shelf. Every day I see my mother struggling. Now it's time I've got to do something. Look for work. I get dissed like a jerk. I do odd jobs and come home like a slob. Here comes Rob. Gold is shimmery. He gives me 200 for a quick delivery. I do it once. I do it twice. Now then stay with the beans and rice. My mother's nervous, but she knows the deal. My sister's gear got sex appeal. My brother's my partner. We're getting paper. Three months later, we run, run our, our own, own paper. paper. My family's happy. Everything is new. Now tell, tell me, me what the fuck am I supposed to do? Yo, Blastmaster KRS One, I love you, man. You're my idol, you saved my life. More than that, you're a friend. You a mentor, someone I could always come to. Uh, I, I don't know how to express it in any other words, how much I love you, man, and everything you've done for me. We're getting older. Mm. COVID is out there. Uh, you look so, younger. So we got to take advantage of these moments. You Yo, know, Joe, you look younger, dude. You look younger. Yeah, man, I know I'm sexy. I'm healthier now. <laughs> you always told me, yo, be a, ve be a vegan. Eat yellow <laughs> tailfish. No Joe, drink more water. And I'm like, yeah, Twinkies for me. But, yo, <laughs> I'm healthy. I'm taking care of my health. I work out every day. Uh, I'm trying to be around. Uh, I love you, and I thank you. Thank you, Simone. Thank your kids, your daughter for uh, making this possible. Uh, no you know, my, doubt. My daughter's 14 years old. As a rise, she's the executive producer of the Fat Joe Show. You already you know, know. You know, I love you, Chris. Thank you so much. Love, Joe. You know, always, always, you're in my heart. Respect. Thank you, my brother. I love this, Joe, bro. That's right, baby. This is the big, 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 big show. Yo, Chris, I am punishing these guys, the competition. <laughs> I know it's the no. truth. I know it's the Yo, truth. Yo, Chris, I am killing these people. Like, they want to jump off the roof. Like, I am destroyed. This is the big, 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 big show. I went outside for one minute. I went to New York for a minute. You know, I own sneaker stores. I went there. As I'm rolling through the block, the whole hood is going big, 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 the big, 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 the big, 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 the big, big show. I am punishing these people. They were, I love you, Chris. Thank you for everything. Love. Yes. Keep punishing them. Oh, man. Blastmaster KRS1. You don't know who I know. That is my idol, Bro Parrish. That is my mentor. He is the reason I rap. Uh, taught me consciousness. When my money was low, he took me on tour with him so I could pay my rent and feed my kids. Uh, when I told him one time I was in trouble with the law, I'll tell you some shit I forgot to tell him. One time I thought I was in trouble with the law and it was gonna be $300,000. It was a Fed case, all my friends was going to jail for Rico. He told me, he paid for the lawyer. Um, friends like this, uh, they're very rare. They're very, very rare. And, and, and I love you guys. And whoever you looked up to, whoever paid the way for you, uh, I hope you get to meet them one day. And I hope they're as beautiful and as incredible as my mentor and my idol KRS one. And uh and no matter what, you know, my godfather was Dominican, Jose Reynosa. 
He would pull up on me when I was in the block hustling. I got the gat on me. He'd pull up in the car. He'd lower the window. And in Spanish, he would look straight up. He wouldn't even look at me. He will go, Pidame la bendición. That means come over here and tell your Godfather to forgive you. And I go over there and he rub my hair, my head. I say, you say, you this, how's your mother, how's your father, and he drive off. And so that's what I do when I speak to KRS-One. I salute the Godfather, the Don, the man who changed my mind and inspired me to get out of a life of crime and violence. He also taught me consciousness, how to give back to my community. That's why we always give back and we support our community. We give jobs to the people. If it's Thanksgiving, we give 5,000 turkeys. If it's school, we'll sponsor every team because of him. And uh, it was an honor to speak to him today, his wife, Simone. She picks up my phone call no matter what time it is, anywhere. I love you guys. Uh, tomorrow night, Floyd Mayweather Jr., the money team, will have an in-depth conversation. Put God first. I know this was a long one, but it actually was short because I could talk to Chris forever. You guys, you're very blessed. You're able to be a fly on the wall and hear stuff you wouldn't hear nowhere else. This is the Jopra show. And I am the Forrest Gump of hip hop. Yesterday, me and Big Daddy Kane talked about what Biggie said. I got seven Mac 11s. About, I, I was standing there. I am the Forrest Gump of hip hop. Shout out Emmanuel Lewis. I got that rosemary cake today. Sugar free peach cobbler. It was insane. Azzy, do you have the card, the rosemary? Listen, guys, tomorrow night, I'll see you at the big show. Waleek, what's up? Hold up. You got the card? Hold up one second, guys, because I need you to support black-owned business. Rosemary Honey on Instagram. Rosemary Honey. If you want a peach cobbler. If you want any type of dessert, this is your place. Rosemary. Honey. Baked from scratch. God bless these people. See you tomorrow, baby. 8 o'clock. DJ Camillo, I love you. DJ Nasty, I love you. Ro Parrish, I love you. Walik, I love you. Yes, this is Black Excellence.